Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this first devotional. Uh, let it bring you glory and honor as we learn how to be disciples who makes disciples who make disciples. Father, we love you. We honor and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. amen. So as we recap, I'm going to go over the, the month, the month um, that we just did and kind of have a discussion to see where we are. I'm going to have some questions for you. The questions I don't think I put on your sheet, but I did put some of my teaching points on your sheet just to kind of jog your memory when you're going through it. Um, in the handout uh, that you have, you have um, the meditation is really what you're, and the lines that are there, you could either use that for today or use it throughout the week, however you want to take notes or however you want to do it, it's strictly up to you. I'm going to be coming from Luke 9, again, 1 through 10, because that's what we've covered. We're going to actually going through in this devotion of the book of Luke. The book of Luke is where we're getting all of this information from. So it's taken us 17 weeks plus or minus some times to get through the book of Luke. So if you want to know ever where we're going, the book of the ninth, that's not even the book of Luke. It's the ninth chapter of Luke. We're just taking all of this discipleship stuff from one chapter of the Bible, the book of Luke. Cassie, I will email you this worksheet after the uh, class, okay? Um, and then, uh, so you can work on it. It'll be a meditation point there that you can do for homework while you're there. And, you know, it's kind of keep you uh, acclimated uh, since we're, we, we, uh, don't have the actual book, but this is the recap from the book. And so I'm going to read Luke chapter 9. If somebody have it, they can actually read it. Luke chapter 9. If someone would read verses 1 through 5 through 6. Who's going to do that? Ma? Okay. Okay, Charlene, you read verses 7 through 9. And then Shelly, you read... Uh, verses 10. So my will go first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke 9 verses 1 through 6. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave the town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. I still Six, it? yep. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Okay, Charlotte. Now Herod, the tetrarch head of all, was done by him. And he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead, and of some that Elias had appeared, and of others that one of the older prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this, of whom I hear such things? And he desired to see him. Verse 10. And the apostles, when they were returning, told him all that they had done. And he, second of the apostles, we're working very good. And he took them into the desert and went aside privately into a desert place. Belonging to the city called Bethesda. That's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can see from this text that they went from being called in 10 verses, from being called to going out and doing all this great stuff, to um, uh, when they came back, he uh, started telling them some more stuff, okay? So it's a, it's, it's a lot to be done in those 10 verses. And so the first verse, I'm really going to, in your first fill-in, is really talking about the call. 
The call is when he brought things together. When you start doing anything, we have to begin to bring things together to get some um, uh, insight into what you ought to do. Once you are a follower of Jesus Christ, um, follow Jesus for a while, he will call you to do more, but he will give you power and authority to do it. The question is, do you believe that you have the power or do you believe you have the authority? If God's calling you and you've been, as Latay said, been saved for 20 years, he's called you and he's empowered you. Why are we at the same place that we've been for so long? And I would say that a lot of times we hear the call, but do we answer it? Or do we just walk away? Do we walk away saying, yeah, Jesus, I'll, 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 I'll be there. I'll, I'll get to you. I'll be, I'll be that. The call has to do with coming together and do something for Jesus. You can't do this work alone. That's a come the partnership thing was, was good. You know, go out, find someone to witness to. And the thing is about that question is, my, how long you been a Christian? Just estimate. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1980. 1980. Uh, how, how long, uh, Wendy? It's about, it's about 20 years, right? Um, Wendy? Been, just, uh, just guess. I don't know. It would have been like 1985. It was probably like five years after mom. Okay, 15, maybe? About 20. 20? Charlotte? Yeah. 15? How about? 97. 97, okay. Teresa? About over 20. 20, how about you, Cass? All my life. Okay, so now we've been in Christendom from 20 to 40 years, but how come we can't find one person to go out and go witness with us? Why is that hard? Now, how many of you could find somebody to go shopping with you? Mm -hmm. How long would that take? How long would it take for somebody to go bowling or go to the movie? Or you, you see the point to go get coffee? How come we've been in the call for 20 to 40 years and we scratch our head with trying to find somebody to go out and witness? What's wrong with that picture? Isn't that kind of jacked? Mm -hmm. There's power and strength when we use our abilities and use our abilities together. But the problem is we can't even find a partner. We can't. Some of us was having a hard time finding an accountability partner. We've been in church and in Christ for 20 to 40 years and we can't find anyone to hold us accountable. What's wrong? With, with this faith that we're supposed to be a body fitly joined. Do you anyone else see a problem with this? True. Right? When he calls us together, it means that he gave you permission to do it. Latte had a great example where she had this friend and she prayed for it. You not only were you given authority to give, you were given permission to do it. How many of us are taking our permissive rights and actually doing it? We're calling other people. I told Shelly, you know, I had a call t t today or yesterday. I don't know. Someone <laughs> called me because they lost their keys. Okay. I I'm like, what? Did you call the police? <laughs> did you call the park services? Like, what do you want me to do? Right. You know, you get the call because they want you to pray. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But like, that, doesn't that seem like kind of crazy? Right. So the question is, what more are you doing since your salvation? What more are you doing in Christ since your salvation? Are you still stuck? That's a question. Question to be answered. <laughs> Anyone, what more are you doing since you were saved? Does the crickets mean that we're not doing anything more or are you thinking I serve um, the poor. I um, 
I try to pray as much as I can for people um, with or without them knowing. Um, I um, read my Bible more than I used to. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's a great, that's great. I feel like I'm too busy um, worried about or focused on um, trying to get myself always out of a rut. This is a cycle that I go through um, that the enemy uses that to keep me focused on myself. I mean, I do witness here and there, but nothing like what I know I'm supposed to be doing. Nothing like I, the urge and the call that I feel when I wake up in the morning, every morning to go out and, and do something for God because the enemy keeps me wrapped up in what the problems I have and what I need to have fixed about me. And so I'm in this 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 constant holding pattern of going around, flying around and you know, a holding pattern of, uh, I gotta get delivered. I gotta get, I gotta lose weight. I, I gotta stop hoarding. I gotta blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is, to keep me from landing and getting grounded in God. And that's where I see myself. I'm not saying that I'm not making progression. I'm just saying I've done this before. Mm -hmm. I've, I've made progression before. I've preached, I've, I've taught classes. I've uh, been the head of the choir, taught Sunday school. I've done a lot of things before. And I feel like I just keep, I'm, I keep trying to, I'm, I'm climbing this ladder that's, it's, it's, it's actually like a, a wheel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm I'm really I'm an, I'm in a hamster wheel. I'm I'm it looks like I'm progressing, but I'm right. I understand. Just going in circles. Spinning. Right. Mm -hmm. If if you haven't answered that question, or you if even if you have, the second question is, what more do you want to do? Do you even want to do more? Amen. Speak Definitely. to them. Like what more? Definitely. I want to go to other nations. Like I really do. I really want to get out of here and go and do exactly what Jesus says. Like, don't take anything with you. Just go, just pick one and go. You know, I really want to go there. And um, I, I feel a little like, I feel a little like I'm not progressing to that, to that yet. I'm almost there, but I'm not there. And I don't, and I want to go there in it. What are you doing? <laughs> that is a cat. <laughs> she wants to go there. Yeah. But no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I really want to do. Okay. So the more is to travel the nations. Okay. And so even if you take that more, what, what is stopping us from doing the more? What is stopping us from doing the more since our salvation? So Lette said what's stopping her is her herself and looking at her issues and looking at, you know, she's this or she's that. But if God has already said he's given you power and strength and he's given you ability and he's given you authority, he's given us everything we need to, to, to do more. And so we've been called to more. And that's what discipleship is really about, a call to more. A call to not only know that it's more, but then to have a desire to do more. If you are hungry, if you're hungry, you know, you will do whatever it takes to continue to feel that hunger because you want more, right? Are we hungry enough for, for, for the disciples? Are we hungry enough? Oh, huh? <laughs> Gotta go out and start buying homes? Because <laughs> that's my more. I'm like, hey, God, we need a home, we need a boutique, we need a dance studio, we just need this gun. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about that. So we have this big thing. We want to, we, we, and, and, and that could be overpowering. That's what I was just saying. You know, it's, 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 it gets overwhelming. It gets overwhelming to think about going to the nation because you don't even have the money to go down the street and buy a peanut butter buck up, right? It gets overwhelming to think that, you know, I want to buy these houses. I want to have a boutique. I want to do this. And how do I do that? What do I do? In anything that we do, the first thing is you have to pray and have a plan. 
and begin to take the small steps that it takes to do the plan. The Bible says to write the vision and make it plain. So maybe you can't have a whole shop or boutique, but could we start in the garage and have once a month clothes to come out? Maybe you can't go to the nations, but can you go into your Korean neighborhood or go into the Khmer neighborhood or go into the Hispanic neighborhood? That's a nation. Mm -hmm. Can you go to the African? I mean, every nation in the world is here in America. Can you we start making connections in the nation here? We might not be able to go abroad. But what the, the, the bottom line is, and, and what I have learned to do is start with what's in my hand. What's in my hand? I was just telling Shelly that the only thing that I know how to do to offer to get any income or to offer anything is teach. And so all we have right now active in KBI is teaching. Why? Because that's all that's in my hand. But if now if Wendy has a boutique in her hand and we put one in the garage, now KBI has expanded. We're teaching, now we have a boutique in the garage. And now what if Cassie were to say once a month we will have a nationality day where we will minister to the Hispanic or we will, now we've gone into the nations. If you start with what's in your hand, you see how it works? A lot of times we think we have to do it all ourselves, but all is God is asking us to do is what's in our hand to do and do it to our best ability. The little boutique in the garage will come into maybe a larger boutique as it starts catching on. We have to, I started the house or city of refuge in my house. I didn't start with this house. I started with it in my house. I had one kid then one kid became four women and a kid. I'm too many people in my house. <laughs> I needed a break. <laughs> so I needed a house to get a break. <laughs> you know, but I started with what's in my hand. And I did that with kids. I did that when I had a husband. I started because that's what he had me to do, to care for people. And I started with in my hand. So what's in your hand? Why can't you start there? Right? That's what's gonna make kingdom builders build because we're all using what's in our hand and, and we're using it together. That's what, this, that's what this house is for. It's for people to use for their gifting. It's not just for me to sit here and teach and for them to sit here and sleep. I told the people when they were outside, I told, I told them when they were in outreach, I said, you mean people just needed a shower? You could have brought them here. We could have washed their clothes here, right? And this house isn't just here for people just to look nice. We're here to help people. If they want a shower, we got a shower. We got a wash. And we can actually talk to them and cook them something while they're here. Whatever is in our hands to do, why aren't we doing it? Amen. That's the call. You hear the call? Does everybody hear that call? Amen. You are empowered and you're given permission to do it. That's what this is about. Jesus called his disciples to give them authority over demons and diseases. Now, this is even a little bit different. Because when he talked about this call, I give you authority over all demons and to cure disease. And so when you think about this, Doing a boutique isn't like casting out demons. No. <laughs> it's not like praying and laying hands on the sick and curing people. Or is it? Mm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. You see how we discount? Because what happens when people are in relationship? Mm -hmm. You begin to talk. Mm -hmm. And as you talk, you hear the demons. You hear the hurt. You hear the pain. Now you have authority, not only to sell them a shirt, but to give them Jesus and their freedom. You see, you see how that works? We have to use what's in our hand. And I'm not saying as soon as you meet someone, get out in the name of Jesus. I slay you, demon. 
Mm-hmm. No. But you have to feel it. I saw that hand, Latay. I saw it when um, I was with this girl on Sunday, and I told her pastor today, man, you got it. You got. Do you see that girl? She's hurting. Oh my gosh! I felt like this girl's like 27 years old, and I asked her, "What's your dream?" She says, "Dream? I don't have a dream. I'm try- I'm just surviving." 27 years old. I wanted to scoop this girl up and say, I'm going to give you a dream for crying out loud. You're not going to leave this place until you're dreaming. But my heart hurt. How can a 27-year-old not have a dream? Go ahead, Lute. I was going to say that um, there's an anointing. Um, when you're anointed and when you're appointed and you're whatever you're selling, you pray over your stuff and there's a transfer of blessings that can occur even in the church. When they put it on their body, they'll feel something. Something will change. There's a deposit that can happen. I've read many times where people brought statues and things into their home with the demonic attachment. Apostle told us about the knife that time. So there is also a deposit blessing and a transfer deposit that can go through clothes. That can go through me coloring someone's hair. That can go through all of those businesses as well. It can be if you touch their hand to give them the change that those those things can happen you know so I'll, i just wanted to point that out that and it's a little bit more than what it appears to the other people and even you know when do you have this testimony when i started telling you to put stuff in the walls of the house that dan is building mm-hmm. tell them that story <laughs> you know it, yeah she's well she told me because building homes in california to pray over the property and then start putting um, scripture in the mm-hmm. foundation or in the, you know, the walls before. Um, and it's, I mean, it's been, I mean, I, it's, it has been amazing to see just, I mean, the, um, what do I want to say? I guess, I mean, it's, it's the, the blessing and the favor of the Lord because it's like the, not just the home selling, but just the, the relationships that are being, that, that have been built, like this, with each person that's bought a home and the connection that has been made mm-hmm. through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 She was like, well, what can I do? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to build a house. I said, this is what you're going to do. And now Dan's like, did you pray in this house? Did you put something in this foundation? And the house is selling before it goes out for market. Yeah, that is true. There was two of them before even the phone call before you What's wow. in your hand? Hallelujah. That was what's in her hand. Yeah. And it makes her and her husband work together. Right. That's what's in your hand to do because that was her heart. She wanted a ministry with her husband. Look at this ministry. She prays he gets the money. <laughs> How awesome is that though? Right? He even puts up with me with this. <laughs> Say you are in that boutique, by the way. I've already put you in there. I'm like, okay, oh. take it. Be doing hair. <laughs> I do that. I incorporate people in my plans. I do that. You have to incorporate people in your plans because all of our plans are too big for us to do it alone. And that's why I said when when they give. I was t- talking to my sister last night about it. When God gives you a vision and He gives you a plan for your life, it use it, it when you're part of a ministry. It fits within the vision, and then you 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 make those connections, and it may be me and you partner up. It may be us. Partner partner or not, but God's going to build you a team right there. You'll have right. your, your support yeah. system and everything. Right. And so to never lose focus that God, had you, you're a part of a vision, but then God gives you something else within that vision. Right. So it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So as we think about these demons and diseases, <laughs> many don't believe they or others are driven by demons. So this authority is not used. The result, people are bound to demonize. Because if you don't believe you have something, you're not going to really do anything to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't think, if you don't think about it, people could be walking around by you demonized, and all you're seeing is the sun. <laughs> you're not seeing the darkness. Mm-hmm. But we are commissioned and called not only to see the light, but to see darkness and then to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Bring light to it. Amen. Not everybody's called to cast demons out, okay? They, they might not feel that propensity. I mean, tell me, 
I was not called. I did not wake up in the middle of the night and say, I want to cast demons out. I want people cussing at me, slapping me, calling me all. I want that job, God. Anoint me for that position. No, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> but I asked, God, whatever you want, use me. But a lot of people want to be able to lay hands sick and, and heal. So just take that part of the scripture. And just take uh, cure diseases. Begin to pray healing for people because everybody wants that. So if you're not going to do all, can we do that? I understand we have the authority and the power to do that. Many trust the doctors and medication, which is a form of witchcraft, really. Pharmacia. Huh? Pharmacia. <laughs> right? But but but. But we trust that more than we trust the authority Jesus gave us over sickness and disease. How does that actually work? The result is people remain medicated all their life, never getting cured of disease, but keeping it under control. And they can control you if you feel like you can't live without the medicine and the government cuts off your funding or your medical. You're like, oh, no, I'm going to die without my thyroid medicine or without my heart medicine. And that's why God is pushing us to to lay hands on the sick, to heal so that we don't have to trust in man, but we can we can trust in him. Please open your eyes to that. We just have to at least put the thought. I was with a person and they were on drugs and they said, I have to have this drug. And they were a believer. And they said, they have to have this drug. And I said, do you have to have it or can Jesus be enough? And it stopped them for a minute. I mean, you don't have to go all out and cast everything out and heal it. But if you just get them to think and plant the seed. The spirit of God can begin to work. And even if they take the medication one day less, that's that's a start. Amen. We all can do our part, but we have to believe Amen. that we have a part and we have authority. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the call. So for your meditation this week, I want you to read Ephesians. It's right there on the sheet. Mm -hmm. And what area, people, groups, or causes are you called to have authority over? That's what I want you to think about. Some people might have people, like Cassie wants to go into nations, but maybe somebody might have a, a cause of human trafficking. Wendy has a cause for human trafficking. She doesn't really care what nation they're in. She wants them to stop trafficking, so that's a cause. So it's a people, group, or cause. What do you have authority over? And, and how you know you have authority over it is that you just can't stop thinking about it. It just drives you. <laughs> what well, did you say, Mom? Two, just two things. <laughs> well, maybe one, but two. <laughs> so when you think about your call, think about what you have in your hand with that authority. What can you do? That's what I want you to meditate. That's why you only got five questions. Because it might not be five seconds think, thinking. It might take a little while to think about it. Right? I ask kind of hard questions, right? <laughs> Mom's like, I'm not answering no darn question. Commission <laughs> is the next one. Commission. This uh, sent out on foot. They sent them out on foot, right? So Jesus sent them out to preach the kingdom of God, not about the church activity, but preaching the kingdom of God. Uh, the right and authority to rule over kingdom, demons and diseases, not to cope with them. He taught them the royal power of Jesus and triumph as a triumphant Messiah. Many churches don't even mention Jesus' name. Mm. They taught about the royal power and dignity conferred to Christians in the, in the Messiah's kingdom. Many feel powerless, and I know I did for a long time. I felt like I didn't have any power, that I was just in church, and it was like, I, I actually said it, sitting in church, if this what it means to be a Christian, I don't want it, because I was powerless. I was getting beat up. I was getting, it was just horrible. I was getting ravished. And I said, are we supposed to have power? And this is how I'm being treated? I'm ready to check out. And he met me right there and told me that I could read. 
And that meant to me that I had the ability to read this Bible and not just receive what people were giving me, but to receive what he was giving me. Exactly. The truth. Right? Amen. Because sometimes we are powerless because we haven't picked up the power in God's word. And I'm not saying I stopped going to church, but what I'm saying is I began to dig for myself and life began on me. And that's when I began to do power because the scripture that really spoke to me is these signs and wonders will follow those that believe. And I didn't have those signs. I, I, I don't even think I was talking in tongues at the time. Wasn't laying hands on sick, wasn't casting out, wasn't doing any of it. Only thing was following me is a bunch of dead cats or something. <laughs> you know, a bunch of stuff that I didn't want cat following behind me. I wanted life. And then the signs and wonders started to follow me because I desired it. So the question is, what do you desire? What do you desire? Okay. So the question for the commission is, do you know more about your church, your denomination, or the kingdom? That's the question. Do you know more about your church or your denomination than you do the kingdom of God? I, I know for me, I hadn't even been taught the kingdom of God. I, I hadn't heard a teaching on it until I started expanding my circles but I could tell you about the denomination I went to what about you everybody's like right they don't want to look up <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't even know I don't even know the denomination of this ministry I, I just thought we were followers of Christ <laughs> I've never heard a, a denomination be specified here right. you know so I definitely don't know the denomination. I barely know everybody's names. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm like, hi, everybody. <laughs> Has knowing that empowered you to preach or witness? Has knowing about your church or knowing about your denomination, has that empowered you to preach and witness? No, no, not at all. Not at all. But how about knowing about the kingdom? Knowing your kingdom rights, knowing what God says, the kingdom of God has come, the kingdom of God is here. When you get to know the kingdom and that your royal priesthood in the kingdom of God, does that empower you in a way that knowing your church's theme, whatever do? I'm not a denominationist, so I'm really a bad person to really go because like I said, I've been in denominational churches up until I figured that I'm not going to look on what's in front of the church. I want to listen what's what the word is. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're Presbyterian, if you're right. Catholic, if you if you're speaking the word of God and the spirit of God is in that place. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people say, well, if you're Catholic, it's, that's just nothing but a cult. I have people that are Catholics that are full of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, I walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's like, don't label don't. people as a cult because of the big community. You can't do that. God is everywhere. Why are you limiting God to what they plaster on a wall? Just like he got me in my pew in a Baptist church, he can get the people in a Catholic church, in a satanic church, in a... Because his spirit is moving everywhere. Amen. And people are hungry to find about the kingdom. Hallelujah. They're not trying to find about a domination. They're trying to find Jesus. Yeah. And that is what the kingdom's about. Mm -hmm. Not this denominational stuff. If you're a denominationist, I'm sorry. I apologize. Huh? That's the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> So Jesus sent them out and told them not to take anything. Oh, now how's that? Now go out and start your boutique, Wendy, but don't take nothing. Okay, Cassie, go out to the nations, but leave everything you got home. Okay, the boutique's open. This church for sale. <laughs> That's funny. Now how's that for faith? Go ahead, Charlene, open a transition home. Don't take anything with you. Okay, now how's that going to work? 
you know. But the thing was, guys, I told the lady, I don't have the money to pay for this. We don't have the money in that account. Wendy knows the story. I'm like, Wendy, what are we going to do? Going to the board. How are we going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> well, y'all can offer this. You can offer that. You can... <laughs> We're just doing creative things to figure out how we can get this. And it happened. It doesn't make sense that we don't have the monthly income coming in our checking account because you got to give them your check statements, your bank statements. And she could see we didn't have the money coming in to pay this rent, let alone the electric bill, the water bill. It wasn't there. But she said, okay, you can have it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't take anything God says, but you have to take your faith. Amen. You have to take your faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. It says, we want to ensure that we have everything we need before we take the journey. I want to make sure the money's in the bank and I also want a cushion. I want to make sure that I have my backup plan. I want to make sure and now that I can see that I can do it. Jesus, I'm the woman for you. <laughs> now that I see I got everything that I need. Send me on that mission. That's not mm -hmm. how it works, guys. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna. It's, he's not gonna wait until all your demons are gone, or all your health issues are gone, or all your headaches are gone, or whatever is stopping you. He's not gonna wait until you get the perfect storm <laughs> to, to take you out. He's going. He's saying, "Are you gonna do it now? Are you gonna do it now? Depressed? Are you gonna do it now? Hungry? Go ahead, Wendy." No, I was just thinking about. It's like, it is true. I just need to remember it at all times because I had the example of my first trip to, it was before I was in the ministry to Cambodia. Pastor Tim asked me if I wanted to go. My heart, I knew I was called to do missions, but I was like, oh, I can't drink the water. When she said, Mom, I, I can't take this, I can't take I that, can't take I can't that. take the makeup. I was yeah. obsessed with, with my, you know, with Eating, like the battling the eating disorder, like how am I going to eat? I'm not going to be able. To, I mean, everything you name it. I was throwing it out to Pastor Tim. He was having Pastor Jam call me. They were Finally, Tim just said, "Wendy, sis." He says, "If you want to help others, that involves taking risk." And I said, "You're right. Okay, forget all that. I'm in." <laughs> and I was like, you know, that my. I mean, obviously, I have still tons of issues, but. My world was like totally rocked when I went on that trip. You know, I mean, so many things happened and I would experience so much, but I just share that because it's true because I was like, right. I gotta have all this. I'm not gonna go until I get it all. And <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You have to do it by faith and you have to take a risk. Mm -hmm. If your life is not taking a risk for other people, you're not living. You're not living. Mm -hmm. I think that you guys are taking a risk with me. You know, you're trusting me to, to move into your home. I'm a felon, you know, and and I and I thank God for it, you know, but, but it's stepping out no, on faith. It's not right I, there. She's not you are not a felon. No. Well, I have been convicted of felony <laughs> in my past. Okay? And so, I am a child of God. But I, I just wanted to say that I was telling Apostle in all my mess. She's like, what? I was like, I'm supposed to be at that house. I me, <laughs> yeah, me the loud one, the wild one, me. I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be there. She's like, but say, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, you got a lot going on there. I know it. Just pray about it. Just, I'm telling you, I'm writing it down. I'm texting her. I'm doing all this. This is this is before Cassie moved in. I was saying that I'm supposed to be at that house, you know. And and I know that I knew what I were, where I was supposed to be, but I wasn't in a place to to you know you know what I'm saying. It wasn't looking good for me. <laughs> and so I thank God because. He cleans yeah. us up from the inside yeah. out. And when yes. man can only see the outward appearance to say, okay, so you're a gambling addict, you're a hoarder, you got anger issues, and you <laughs> want to come over here to this house? You want me to trust you and put you over God's people? And so in a very, very short amount of time, God is, apostle took a risk, the, the team took a risk, the, my sister, you know, trusted me. Uh, it's taking a risk, and and progressively, I'm seeing God do the work mm -hmm. instead of me saying, "Oh, I can do this. I got this." You know, mm -hmm. I'm seeing the change, and it's a risk, you guys. 
it's a risk to, to move out of my comfort zone of I don't know any well now I do and that, to know people out here that live out here but each step of the way God is God is encouraging me through it and now I'm gonna be on a diet because I'm not gonna be picking out in front of her she's eating one little <laughs> piece of fish you know what I'm saying and she's looking at me like this <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be sitting here doing that, but you know what I'm saying? And then, All right, let's you know, move on. So, so I'm just saying that there's a standard and, and there's health and the things that I need are God's putting it all in place and it's, it's about taking, jumping out there. That's true. You know, and that's what I'm, that's what we're doing. We're, you know, jumping out there, launching out. So I'm, I'm thankful and excited. So when you think about being commissioned and we have this word foot, foot is an abbreviation for faith, order, which means two by two, obedience and trust. That's foot. It's out, it should be on your paper. Didn't I put it on your paper? On your meditation, on your meditation point. Faith, order, obedience and trust, foot. That's what you have to do to, to be commissioned. You have to take the foot. You have to take it. Do you have faith? Do you have order? Do you have obedience? And do you have trust? That's the step you have to take. And the meditation question is going to be Proverbs. I spelt it wrong, but Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. We all know that. Trust in the Lord. The meditation question is right there under the commission. Okay, that's going to be your homework. And then there's, there's your uh, questions that are there. That's what you're going to be meditating on. Okay, next one, confidence is your next fill in. Confidence in their call and their commission. I'm gonna have to speed it up because I think we're supposed to stop at what time? At eight? I think. Um, every call and commission requires a response. The disciples had confidence because they had their foot on the rock, who is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? If your foot's on anything else, you're on seeking sand. Your faith has to be on Jesus Christ. Your trust has to be in Jesus Christ. You have to obey Jesus Christ. You have to be ordered by Jesus Christ. That is going to be where you're going to stand. We can't respond in confidence when our foot is sinking on, on the uh, sand of self, other people's thought of us, cares of this world, and demonic interference. We can't, we can't stand on that. We, we can't stand on, okay, I'm overweight, so I can't even. I was so afraid when I went to Neymar. When I went to Neymar, we had to walk up this mountain. And Tim was like, we drove a certain way. Then we had to walk up a hill and through a stream and, and going through the bush. And like, we're going up there. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it up this hill. And so... Here we go, going up to Mount Horeb, the, the, the prayer center. And sure enough, we went through the village. We stopped at the bottom, and all you could see is woods. And we were walking up this riverbank to get to this. Thank God it was dry that day <laughs> because it was flooding the last time they went. So it was dry. And I'm walking up this thing, and it was like, I actually made it. I made it to the top. You're gonna to have to have faith and doesn't matter what shape you're in, what's gonna what's gonna take you up to the top of that mountain is my faith going two by two, the order, obedience, and trust. I trusted God. You should have seen these little teeny boys, these Nehemiah, and I don't know what they're called, helping me down this mountain. Cause like, I was like slipping a foot. And like if I would have fell, I would have wiped out half the village, right? They're all these tiny people, right? And they think they can stop me. Once I'm falling, it's like a snowball. <laughs> but I made it down without falling. They were laughing at me. <laughs> But I had confidence. Instead of operating in confidence, we act as cowards who hurt, who, who get hurt and hurt easily. When you're a coward, somebody can say something and you're like, get offended. You're like, why did you say that about me? Oh, she doesn't like me. That's a coward attitude. We have to have confidence to do the things in God. Because like, 
why do we always think people in Christ are out to get us? I'm sorry, you're not that important. <laughs> We're not that important. You know what I'm saying? Our job is, is Jesus Christ and everybody's not out to get us. And we're mm -hmm. cowards because we think that we're just looking, we're looking at the wrong thing. Our, huh? Our perspective is we, Our confidence got to be in Christ Jesus. These disciples, he said, go out in two by two. I haven't been there yet, but you go out into these villages. I'm going to go follow you up. And they're like, okay, let's go. Now, Latay and Charlene, no, Latay and Charlotte, go out to this village. Well, wait a minute. I don't, I don't, I don't have this. I don't have enough food. I don't have enough this. I have to, I, wait a minute. I might I have, have a heart attack. Medicine. <laughs> confidence. Mm. The disciples had confidence to preach, so God demonstrated his power in and through them everywhere. Hallelujah. Everywhere. When you have confidence and you begin to preach the word of God, man, something happens. Just imagine, you go into this village, you're preaching, Jesus Christ is Lord, and he saves. And somebody comes up limping, and you pray for them, and they walk out. I don't need my cast anymore. I don't need my cane anymore. Do you know what that does to your confidence? Yes. When I prayed for this lady in Delaware, she was all walking all like this when she came in. When she left, she was swinging her path. Like, she was dancing dancing like this with her cane and she was a big woman too and she was dancing like this I was like go ahead girl <laughs> I never forget that she was going up the aisle like this. <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> do you have confidence in your call or your commission that's a question. Do you have confidence to preach and pray everywhere? Explain why you don't or why you do. That's not a homework question. That's just a question to ponder. Everywhere, in that supermarket, in the health club, in your job, at the party, in front of demonic forces, in front of Wiccans, you know, I say to a wicked, you want me to pray for you? And like, you want to pray for us? Hey, I want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I pray anyway. You know, my husband's going to go on a trip to Arizona, Teresa. <laughs> this next week, he asked, came in the bedroom this morning. He says, I just need you to pray. Let's pray together, you know, and we are different. We pray right. every day. He memorizes prayers. It's not mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I want him to know that you don't have to have a memorized prayer. So he waited and we waited quietly. And I thought, I think he's waiting for me to start to. <laughs> so Good. I prayed and asked for God's protection over him and um, for everything to go well and for him to be with him. And I did the prayer and for him to be able to find his way to the airport <laughs> and, and to the hotel and that type of thing. And then in Jesus' name, amen. So then he recited his prayer. But later on, mm -hmm. this is a thought that came to my mind. I can see Charlene what she's going to say. <laughs> I thought next time, I'm acting like Pauline, next time when I say the prayer, I'm going to end it with, and Lord, I just pray for my husband to ask Jesus into his heart. Awesome. Do you think so? Yeah. That would really be did. awesome. I thought about that afterwards. If he's the one that's asking me to right. pray, then I'm going to pray what I want. <laughs> yeah. That will <laughs> never be a wrong you know, prayer. Because really, I pray it when I'm by myself. But then he asked me to pray all the time. Right. Darn it. Well, Lord, you know next time I'm coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> and just and see, you know, what comment he'll make. He may not say anything, but I thought, you know, I'm going to do it out loud. And he's asking Good for me. you. I believe that's, that's going to Good for him. you. That touched me hearing you yeah. say that. I believe that him hearing that is, is going to touch him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Jesus. Yes. Amen. So confidence is the feeling or belief that one can rely on something or someone. It's a firm trust. Confidence cannot come from our abilities, but it comes from God. Amen. That question comes from God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from out of your, well, it might come out of your soulless realm because you want them, but God wants him saved, yeah. right? Yeah. We look for self-confidence to do things, but to preach, to pray, to move into power, we must have God confidence. Amen. If you don't have God confidence, you're not going to be able to do it. I don't have self-confidence that I can preach. Girl, you did a good job. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Because like, I don't know. 
<laughs> you know, but through the power of God, I'm thankful. Everything has to be done through Jesus. The only way we can know God is for us is by doing what he's called and commissioned us to do by faith. The only way that I could know that I could teach is if I start teaching. The only way I knew I could well, preach is to start preaching. And I didn't think I could preach because I was a woman. So I had to get that, that spirit off of me. You know, I could only preach in front of women because I was told all my life that women can't preach, right? They can't be preachers, right? Wow. And so I had to preach with that religious spirit on myself. And, and it wasn't until I was in a hotel, complete stranger. I was in a Super 8 taking my kids down to a basketball tournament. I'm in sweatshirts and a t-shirt, hair probably all jacked up, right? <laughs> I'm just coming out of the, the breakfast thing and I'm going up back up to my room. And this guy comes out of nowhere and says, you're a preacher, aren't you? <laughs> and I just looked at him and said, yeah, I'm a preacher. He says, I knew you look like a preacher. <laughs> How do I look like a preacher with sweatshirts and a t-shirt? Hallelujah. I had to state who I was. Because until I stated who I was, I was preaching in fear and not in faith. You have to preach by faith. Hallelujah. Because if you're preaching fear over people, you're selling clothes in a boutique in fear, or you're teaching, you know, whatever you're doing, if you it's the wrong spirit. You got to do it by faith. That's confidence. Yes, Lord. Your meditation question is going to come from Jeremiah 1, 8, and 8 through 10. And the questions are there. So I'm not going to read them. You got it for homework. The next fill-in is conflict. Number four is conflict. Got one more to go through. A serious disagreement or argument. An in incompatible or variance. Right? incompatibility or variance. So many in society either deny Jesus or think he represents something else. The power of witnessing Jesus comes from what we believe, not what they believe. Do you realize that? People don't believe in Jesus, but that's not where the power comes from. The power will come from our belief. And because we believe we get empowered to speak what Jesus says speak and that power works with the person's spirit and then the conviction of the Holy Spirit is the power that's going to work in them. But if you don't ever speak in power, then the power won't be released. Our fear is, oh, I might witness to them and they might say no, but what if they say yes? Why are we always thinking negative? But the, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter if they say yes or no, because the power is released by your faith by speaking Jesus. Hallelujah. That's your assignment, not theirs. Okay? So we, we, we're going to have conflicts. People want to see the power in Jesus that they heard about. The first power we must demonstrate is unconditional love. That has to be the first thing. If you don't love people, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to you. This girl that came up to me on Sunday, she was so afraid. She, she came up to me like this. I'm like, hey, what's up? Oh, I've been wanting to say something to you for, for weeks. Like every time I see you, I'm like, well, why didn't you? Oh, I was afraid. You were always busy. Oh, girl, come on. Just being down to earth. Don't be like, yeah, I was busy. <laughs> and I'm busy right now. <laughs> Just love people. Because once you love on them, now she's opening up, she's sharing, she's, you know, because now I'm an open book. We all mean mugging people. What do you want? I was just wondering how I was looking at that girl because I was like, I'm watching these people, making sure nobody's trying to mess with the possum. <laughs> and that, I was just thinking, I was, mean mugging. What did my face look like? Mean mugging. <laughs> At church on Sunday. Mean mugging. I was? Mean mugging. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ugly. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's when you're like this. <laughs> 
You know, you're giving the resting bee face. <laughs> oh man, that's messed up. So unconditional love because people believe Christians are judgmental mm -hmm. and prideful. Mm -hmm. They already believe that, right? So we must face their belief with the truth of who Jesus is. He's love. He's not judgmental and he's not pride. Amen. We are the ones to do that. So the question, has conflict stopped you from witnessing or praying everywhere? What conflicts do you face or afraid to face when witnessing or praying for people? Would you like to do a role play so I can help you if you are afraid? My conflict is that they're going to put their hands on me. And after that, all the, the preaching goes out the window. That's my real fear. My fear is I go to the people. Remember I told you I was conquering my fear going out and passing out the food yeah. on CIA? Yeah. Because that's my fear. They're going to try to do something. They're going to try to harm me or they're going to try to harm somebody with me. And then they're going to see a real manifestation and okay. not of the let's, Holy Spirit. Let's deal with that. So we, I see that hand cast. So we have a fear that someone will touch you during uh, an outreach or a, a witnessing experience. Not touch, because I'll hug people, but I mean harm me, hit me, attack me. Okay. And so when you go into that environment, the, what you do is you just pray and you have a shield around you. Now I can tell you this works because I told you the story when I'm out in the woods and the guy was coming after, was walking up to me with a rake, pitchfork rake. And he lifted the rake up like this and I'm walking to him and he's walking to me and he's lifting this rake and I'm about to this chair to him and he's walking toward me with this pitchfork and I'm praying because I see this pitchfork from way back there. I'm going through the woods and I'm by myself, the other person, they're trying to get up the hill. And so I'm walking towards him, and it's a guy and me in the woods. He had this, and I was like speaking in tongues. And when he got about this close, I said, drop your weapon. He went like this, boom, and it was a log right here. And he stuck that log into that thing, and I could never stop. I never stopped. I continued to walk and just hugged him because I understood God's got this. That's like off a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have faith in God. You cannot do this work in fear Amen. because fear will destroy you. Amen. The, the fear. It's a torment. It's he torment. could have always had a plan to put that thing in that thing. And all these things, I'm still covering myself. And as soon as I, I said, I didn't say, drop your weapon. Uh, no. Get your hands up. I didn't. <laughs> no, I just said it's like this because I'm speaking to demons because our battle is flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood. Right. And I just said, drop your weapon. And it went like that. See, that fear just tried to take me with that creaky door right there. <laughs> My, so pray. Amen. Put the and, and by the way, if you die doing Jesus' work, so what? I'm going straight to heaven. <laughs> One way ticket, baby. I'll see you guys there. But I'm, I'm asking you seriously. If God sends you in a place and you die. Well, that's my end in my mind. That's my end. My end is that a lot of us will go out like that but, in a place of so serving what's, you. So what's, what's wrong with that? It's not my time yet. How do you know? Because I got some work that I haven't done. <laughs> <laughs> I say this, until you are, I, I do this because I'm not afraid to die. Amen. If I die doing what God sent me to do, it was my time to die. Mm -hmm. My life will not go before he says it. That's why I do what I do, fearless. Amen. Because I don't when care. I, when I was in the hospital, and, um, Speak up so they can hear you online. It's kind of like when I was in the hospital and I woke up and, and I was intubated and I was in the ICU and you know they were telling me what had happened and I'm like, hey, like, where's the bright lights? Like, you know, where's Jesus? You know, mm -hmm. people are always talking about their encounters and what I didn't see squat. <laughs> I didn't see <laughs> you know, I just woke up, you know, and I'm like, wow, I'm not, wasn't afraid to die. Just, you know, if I, if I passed away, I passed away. If I right. work for Jesus, I work for Jesus. It's all good. You know? Right. But I was like. No, no, no death experience. Go ahead, Kathy. Cassie. 
take off. Okay. Um, so I've had an instance where, uh, cause my natural habit before, um, before I was baptized in the Holy spirit was my reactions. My reactions were very, I, I would grow up swinging and that's just natural. And so then, um, so when I was in prison, I got baptized in the Holy spirit and, and I felt like, um, as soon as I stepped into faith, as soon as I stepped into something that was just unbelievable, just like a yes, there, there is nothing that can hurt us. God is already protecting us. He's already taking us. There was a moment when I was in there and some girl just came up to me and choked me at like, like she straight up went up to me and choked me out. And in a long time ago, I probably would have knocked her out. But like, instead, I just looked at her and there was something that was compassionate and, and it wasn't about me, but that the Holy Spirit is within us and has already got us in that moment far before we get into it, mm -hmm. stopping us because we, we are nonviolent people. And, and so when, and even, even if anything, if somebody comes at you, God's already got you and you're not going to get hurt. I believe that he won't let you get hurt. I believe that there is instances that's going to happen that that is going to be supernatural and faith filled and you're going to walk into it and you defeating that fear and asking God, hey, can you just take away this fear because I have a fear of somebody hitting me, he'll take it away. You got to just ask them and then walk it out and, and, and train your mind to believe exactly what God has told you already that I have nothing to fear. Nobody's going to hurt me. And even if even if somebody does hurt me, that I'm not going to sin against God by hitting them back. I'm going to let, the, I'm, yeah, that's well, but that's not your, that's not your chose. That's not your route though. It's, it's God has to choose if you get hit or not. So if you go in there swinging at somebody afterwards, if somebody hits you and then you swing back, you know, but if you have that, like you say, Holy spirit, I need your self-control. I need this. And he will give it to you guaranteed hundred percent. And you will walk in there and you're going to be a changed person and don't let the devil lie to you and say, you can't do this because of this or that or whatever, but that you're going to go into whatever field it is. And you're going to proclaim who Jesus is. And if there are scary people around, they're not going to scare you in Jesus name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The thing, the thing is, like I said, if you do get hurt, if you do get stabbed, if you do get punched, there's going to be persecution in the end time. John the Baptist lost his head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's this is a real thing. It's going to get really hard being a Christian mm -hmm. and you cannot go with your fist. You've got to go with your faith. And that's how come the first question when you do missions you have to face the question of, am I willing to die for this? Right. And if the answer to that is no, don't go out on the street. Stay here and fix the sandwiches. You know what I mean? And because that's that's where you, that's a help. Yeah. But if you're not willing to go out into dangerous situations, I mean, Wendy and I, we were told when we were going to Haiti that it was a, it, it is a red zone. Don't go to Haiti. Americans get kidnapped and killed in Haiti. Yeah. And Wendy's like, okay, <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> we're standing out on the balcony and we're like, uh, it's a fire over there. <laughs> and like, there was no fire trucks. There was no way around. We're out there, I said, Wendy, you need to text the team right now. We need them to pray. And we're praying to people like, you know, it's a fire. Like, well, who's going to put this fire out? I'm right. like, don't burn down the airstrip because like that. <laughs> it's a dirt airstrip and grass, right? And it's so like, we're praying. And I'm like, okay, it's done. We can go to bed now. Mm -hmm. And me and Wendy went to bed. Yeah. And everyone, fire coming, wildfire. Like yeah, you could see it from the, yeah. The whole sky is burning with fire. We went to bed. And we heard, we're still here. We didn't get burned up. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It happened <laughs> the on the plane on the way there, too. <laughs> <laughs> we prayed a rut. <laughs> I mean, the plane was going like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> we went to that.
that one place in Haiti and like the lines were all backed up, but the guy was like, you, come with us. And they escorted us through all the stuff. <laughs> if you're not ready to die for Jesus, right. you ain't ready to fly with Jesus. Yeah, and it's on the it's on the contract to move into KBI. I was like, what? <laughs> Hey, we had to get all the eyes crossed and T's dotted. I don't want people suing me because she dies on the mission. Don't judge me, Cassie. <laughs> So, well, that's the role play. So, typical conflicts and sharing your faith. Fear of failure is the first one. Remember, all we are commanded to do is share the gospel and leave the results to God. It's not your job to get the end. I can give you my notes. Y'all are taking lots of notes on this. Oh, you know, I'm not writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send y'all. Maybe it's just my paper. <laughs> it's on there, though. I just understand yeah. it because I had rejection is the next one we are not responsible for a person's response to the gospel the holy spirit convicts truth not us we have to know that the other thing how to begin witnessing conversation how do you turn from oh it's a lovely day to do you know jesus you know <laughs> that transition is a hard thing and people don't know how to do it so here's a couple of transition uh do you think about spiritual things, you know, as you're walking in this, do you think about spiritual things? And you're listening to them talk about their problems. Wow, how do you overcome such problems? And then you stop. Can I share how I, my life changed? Hallelujah. Right, isn't that a smooth transition? How about, wow, that's deep. Can I pray for you in that area? People usually, I don't care who they are, if they're going through something, they'll ask for prayer. And just, is it, just say, is it okay if I pray for you? You know, you're sitting there talking and I don't know, maybe y'all don't get into the past the, you know, it's nice weather out there, but after it's nice weather out there, the next thing they tell me is, man, I was abused. I was raped three times. I, you know, I got a drinking problem. I got a pornography problem. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I've known you for five minutes. <laughs> I'm like, you're telling me your deepest secrets. Okay. <laughs> Can I pray for you? You know, so this... <laughs> So that's my experience. You know, I used to say, do I have a sign like I care sitting on the top of my head? I mean, I'm leaving the cleaners and people telling me about their sex life. I'm like, this is my normal life. So transition for me, no problem. <laughs> it happens with hairstylists like that. They you see what I'm approach saying? approach about anything. And I tried to be on the dating app, and then the people started talking to me about their mom died and their brother died. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get married. Why? So I'm praying for all the people yeah. that I thought I was going to be going on a date. Yeah. People can see. I know they that. can see the spirit of God on us. They can see something different. They don't know what it is, but they know mm -hmm. it's up. They know for. They know. They know that I can help them. Amen. And they will bleed their whole heart out in a five minute conversation. Five minutes. It doesn't matter. That's God. That yeah. has nothing to do with me. And it's been like this for years. I, 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 yeah. Anyway, that last one, ignorance of the gospel. Remember, salvation is not a plan. Salvation is a person. Okay. Hallelujah. Salvation is a person. Jesus. You don't need to know the whole Bible. You just need yeah. to know one verse. Yeah. If you know John 3, 16, you can lead anybody to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. If you, that, that one scripture, mm -hmm. that's all you need. You don't need to know all 66 books of the Bible. You just need that one verse. Mm -hmm. there you go. And you can win the world. So stop thinking you don't know enough. <laughs> Man, no one knows the whole Bible. Give me a break. 
Your meditation question is going to come from Matthew 6, 23 to 25. And finally, the catch. That's your last feeling, the catch. To capture, to, in, to in, intercept, and hold something which has been thrown, propelled, or dropped. So I just, I just imagine that, to have a catch. God is just like dropping people in front of me. To be a catch, he's dropping it. They're dropping these souls right in front of us. Now we thinking about the catches, we're throwing out this line and yeah, that's one way to fish. But this catch means, when I looked it up, it means to capture, yes, but it also means to hold something that's fallen. We can do that. We will never capture anyone, I guess see that hand, if we don't take the risk to go out and catch something. Go ahead, Cass. And we don't know the fruit that we, or the seed that we're planting, that, that it won't even be um, watered until years and years later. Um, my cousin, my cousin, I have been pushing. I have been, I bought her her first Bible, like when we were little. I remember just like always telling her about, because she's receptive. And so like, you know, she was easy to talk to about, but she didn't didn't walk the road and she didn't speak Jesus so I just left it at that and I and throughout the years I would like I really humbled myself and really took care of like her during her times of withdrawal and stuff like that and just telling her about Jesus and I recently found out that she is super like she believes she's like talks about Jesus on her Facebook and all kinds of stuff and she just she just received my um it's taken a long time to get her attention to um to come back into my life and stuff but like she just accepted my friendship request like today awesome and that's how i know that she's talking about jesus because i'm reading it i'm like what this is amazing <laughs> to me i had no idea she grew up buddhist Mm. and um but she's talking jesus and i was just like man that's so cool to see that and that took a long time i have a similar situation where i was in cambodia and dobby brought i'm in cambodia and dobby's like bringing me her relatives in my hotel room to pray for them <laughs> i mean it was like really you got all these people you bring them into my room right and so this one girl was her girl it was her niece or cousin and her friend I brought her friend to Christ, right? Years later, she came to America and she called me and she wanted me to do her wedding. Hallelujah. She wanted a Christian wedding because they didn't have the Christian. So she got the white dress and, you know, so that was like you said, the fruit. I mean, when I saw her, she was in high school and now she's like 30 or something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're beautiful. You want me to do your wedding? Of course I'll do your wedding. You know, it was just beautiful. So that took time. But how great is that? Amen. How great is that? So catch. The disciples were excited about what they had saw because they knew they took nothing with them and the thing started to show up. That's what that's a miracle. We must put we must uh, put a, a a what is that? We must find no a rope, a, a, a net, a rod is supposed to make. We must put a rod or net in the water to catch fish. The, the world is an ocean and the gospel is a food. God has established to win them into the house of the master fisherman. So we actually have to put a rod in the, in the water. We actually have to put a net out there. We have to actually do something to catch a fish. You can't say, oh man, I wanna make a disciple and stay in your room all day. It's not gonna work. It never, if we never uh, seek to catch anything, we can, but you be assured of one thing, you will be successful, mm. right? If you seek that, you'll be successful. So question, has being intentional this month started a desire in you to be intentional about your faith? And how can you be intentional about fishing? Those are things to think about. Okay, before we capture anyone, we must first be captured right and so has christ captured first your mind 
Do you think about, what do you think about most often? Has he captured your thoughts? Is all you think about is the next sugar cookie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I said sugar cookie and I saw you mouth food. I heard you. I didn't even look at you and I heard sugar cookie. Stop it. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about time? Where do you spend most of your time? Has he captured you? What about your emotions? Do you stay on emotional roller coaster or do you have peace most of the time? You know, many people don't want to be around you if you if you all roller coastering around. They're good when you're on your down roller coaster, but they don't. Ah! <laughs> what about your talents? Have you used your gifts to enlarge the kingdom or your ego or pocketbook? You know, how have you used your talent? What about your money? Do you spend more money on coffee and self-pleasure than you do sewing into the place where you are spiritually fed? Mm. Huh? Do you rob the church by getting free meals while paying a high price for natural food? Mm. Where or who has captured you? You're going to have a meditation this week where you're going to look at how you spend your time. And you'll find out really if God's captured you. That's going to be your meditation next week. And it's a four-part question, so <laughs> that's the only one that's a four-part question, okay? And then the last question I want you to do is summarize your thought. Write what you've learned in this study and what actions you will take to intentionally to be intentional about your faith. And I'd like to hear that uh, so that I can know, you know, for future classes and for future students, because this is kind of the book when you're coming into Kingdom Builders International, this is our foundation into our discipleship program. And so you guys are the first fruit of this. And for, you know, we'll do the edits and whatever edits you have, you can pass those on and we get it. But hopefully you got the meat out of it and could kind of walk over the editorial stuff that's there. We can fix that up. Uh, but if we can make this book better, um, we do have other books here. Uh, we have the uh, Faith Discipleship for uh, uh, Devotional. We have the second one already here already, level two. And so if you want to take the class, it'll be starting in two weeks, but we will have meet classes the next two weeks. Um, I'll be out of town, but we, Teresa will be teaching one week and Wendy will be teaching one week. So we'll still have the Wednesday Bible studies uh, and they're still going to stay in this vein. Um, okay, uh, you need one. So I don't know where you are and how to send it to you, Cassie. Uh, you can maybe, or how long are you going to be out of town? Uh, August 7th. Okay, so you'll need it before. So if you just send me your email address, I have to mail Teresa one too. I'll mail it to your address. I can, I can, I can send you the, uh, the address via text. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I'll order it when I order Teresa. She just told me to order her book and I'm have it sent from Amazon straight to you. Oh, okay. Okay. So that'll be quicker. Wait for me to put something in the mail. You can forget it. Uh, it's on Amazon? Yeah, it is on Amazon, but if you order it on Amazon, they're going to charge you an extra 10 bucks for it. Oh. Okay. It's cost like $27 on Amazon. I don't know why it costs so much on Amazon. But I'll do it uh, for the author's rate, and that way you'll get it for cheaper. You'll just have to pay. I think it's like, I don't know. I forget how much. I think I might have still charged 10 bucks. I don't know if I charge for shipping or whatever. But Okay, any questions, comments, or concerns? How was the, the recap? I like this. This is really good. So we'll do this recap uh, after each book, after each four weeks and uh, kind of go over with the lessons that we've learned and kind of give you this food for thought and meditation and summarize it and that'll go back in the next edition of the book um so that the book will now have a recap session in it because i want it to be a self-study because i hope that i don't 
I am not going to be able to teach this class over and over and over again and to continue to develop more classes. So my hope is that we'll get more teachers to, to kind of facilitate these classes and I can go on and do what I, other things that I need to do. So that's the hope. Okay. Any other comments? I, I like on the part where you were, where it was talking about catch. Uh huh. And I thought about. I thought I liked the part. I thought about. I, I like the part about intercept. The word intercept jumped mm -hmm. out of me and thrown mm -hmm. because I think about an interception from the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, he. You know, he had a plan for you, and then you got you're jumped up and you're caught by that mm -hmm. salvation by that person by not the plan and then the uh throne when i also thought about throne i thought about people thinking that you are worthless or whatever and throwing you away and then right before you're just about to hit that trash or whatever you're caught you're, you, you get you, oh, that's you good. catch it you know that's, those are the visuals that that's i saw good. that's what we yeah. have to do we have to catch them before they fall you know i was yeah. thinking when you were talking about how you feel you get down on yourself and you're not worthy and I thought man think about Peter think about it he denied Jesus denied he even knew it three times mm. so then when Jesus came back who did he holler out to on the water mm. Jesus who did he feed breakfast to to Peter mm. so I always compared myself to Peter because he was a cusser that helps me a lot. It really is. Seriously. I'm serious. No, I mean, I'm serious. 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 He cursed himself. Yeah, yeah because uh, when he denied Jesus, the last time he said it, when he, it was it was actually more than a cuss. It was a curse. It was like so bad that he stripped his his um his uh his, his shirt or something. No, no, no. His um his connection with God. Oh, okay. He, he was he disowned. He was disowned by by his by that whatever came out of his mouth. But what really? Yeah. Just, but was he really captain because of what she just said when Jesus came back? How he 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 he, 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 he repented and he repented. Oh, repented. Oh, yeah, he repented. He, Jesus forgave him and Jesus forgave him. He wanted to to, to let him know because Jesus already told him, "Dude, before the night's over, you're gonna deny yeah. me, right?" Right. And so he wanted him and the disciples to know the power of repentance and the power of being accepted back in to have food with them and to have fellowship is to have a uh, dinner with them at his table was Amen. a sign of friendship and, and acceptance Unconditional love. and i recently read that jesus had already told peter what was going to happen he said the yeah. devil satan yeah. has asked to, to sift to you and yeah so when when you when you return back to me strength strengthen your brother your brethren mm -hmm. so he was already he already ha was given some foreknowledge of like what was going to happen you know with his outburst and then and then his walk who knows but he came back and he was repentant and and he had probably you know then he led and then and, and he led five thousand three thousand and five thousand to, to christ so many. those failures propel you for dynamic success in christ yeah. like a shift Christ does not drop you because you failed. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? First thing is when Peter first said, said, no, I won't. You know, he was prideful. Right. No, I won't do that. Had that pride thing. Mm -hmm. you know, and then he so you're, you, you, you're talking to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking to all of us. <laughs> he was a cusser. He was violent. Remember, he cut the, the guy. Right the here. Right. Actually, he went, what are you shaking an apostle's hand for, lady? Okay, that's, that's what happened on the Sunday. I'm like, mm, I don't know that red lipstick. I don't know. Watch me. No, pray for her. <laughs> then he repented, and then God used him. Mm -hmm. So I got hope in that. That was sounding woohoo. When Cassie was saying he broke that thing when he cursed himself, 
and it was sounding rough, but I but I thank God for His redeeming power, exactly, you know, and His forgiveness and mercy. He came back to strengthen the entire brotherhood. Amen. He came back that, that his his like his mess up. Cause he kept messing up, but he came back. He's the only one that got to experience a lot of the things that other apostles or, you know, disciples didn't because he kept coming back. Like David coming back. He coming back. He kept coming back. I keep on coming back. Yeah. I'm coming back till I can't come back no more. Till, I'm, till I can't walk. You till know, I can't one of those whatever. boppers where you would hit them and they would go fall back and they would come oh, back. Oh, yeah, 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 with the fan and yeah. the water at the bottom. That's yeah. how we have to be. Amen. Bam, then it, boom, I'm back. <laughs> nice job. <choice. laughs> Amen. Close us in prayer, you. Cassie. Thank you for that. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for um, your teaching to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for um, your faith that you are the author of faith and that you just continue to feed us, that you continue to nourish us, Lord. Um, I thank you for this teaching, Lord. I thank you for um, Pastor, um, Pastor Apostle Charlene, Lord. I thank you so much for um, the House of Refuge. I thank you for all these ladies, Lord Jesus. Um, just ask that you continue to walk with us this week, strengthen us, bring us courage, um, us empower us in those moments that we need to be empowered allow us to tell others about G about you lord jesus um without any shame or any fear lord help us to walk this out the way you would have us to walk this out lord and boldness lord thank you so much for our country thank you so much for um, our families thank you so much for what you are doing you are mighty you are sovereign you are just who you say you are lord and it's, it's awesome to you know see you do all the things that you have promised and you continue to encourage every single one of us in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank, thank you, you everyone i'll see you okay, bye bye bye, bye. bye.